Welcome, everybody. This is the Waiting Room Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Waite. And today, uh, you know, not a not a super exciting podcast. Uh, I am, however, now on the road. Uh, I just got to Minnesota today. Uh, so, you know, we're taking the show on the road. Uh, I may have to alter days and uh, how often I do shows. But, you know, this is the first pod on... You know, while while I'm on the road, and uh, this is also the last pod that uh, you guys will, I don't know, be be graced with uh, not having to stare at my normal face. Uh, you know, I hear various things, mostly from my mother and uh, partner, who you know think I'm handsome no matter what. Uh, but you know, I know some people are just real tired of looking at my face. So, you know, the beard helps sometimes. Uh, so, you know, uh, I start back on my military duty. Uh, most of you know I am in the military. Uh, so I start back on military duty in the morning. So that might also clash with show schedules. But, uh, yeah, I will have to shave this real patchy beard. It's not great. Uh, honestly, I pick at it sometimes, pull some hairs out. Real weird, nervous tick. Um, but yeah, so this will be the the last time you all will have to stare at this thing growing on my face. Unfortunately, you will have to stare at the the, the normal face. Uh, so, uh, as far as show topics go today, uh, you know we got we got to be playoffs, and uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the Bill Cosby release today uh, because he did get released his court conviction got turned over and I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. he was probably the first and probably since the most high profile guy to get convicted during the me too movement and I understand that the me too movement has ruined some things for all of us uh, but it's also brought to light that there's some real just shitty people out in Hollywood that have been, been getting away for with stuff for a long time. Uh, so it bugs me. I want to talk about it a little bit. But first, uh, let's, let's jump into it. Uh, for all my friends out in Phoenix, I'm sure we're all super happy right now. Phoenix Suns going to the NBA playoffs. Or only NBA finals. Sorry, been drinking a little bit. Uh, M- NBA finals. That's great for them. I think it's super great. Uh, they're probably going to win. Really not trying to to use my, my jinx magic on them. Uh, but at this point, they've been the most consistent team uh, during the entirety of the playoffs. Yeah, they lose a game here and there. They're 12-4 and four, uh, over the first three rounds. Uh, they're the most consistent team, regardless of if the Hawks or Bucks win. Really... I mean, they, they may they may pose a threat, but as of today, as we're speaking, uh, the Bucks are without Giannis, the Hawks are without Trey, and I'll get to their series a little bit after this, but Phoenix Suns, I, I just don't see how they lose. So tonight, uh, Chris Paul, Chris Paul, yeah, goes, yeah, the guy is, the guy's known for choking. He really is. Uh, the guy throughout his career, 16 years in, has never made an NBA Finals until today. Uh, just closes game out. 41 points. 41 points. I think he had a couple rebounds and eight assists. Um, played, you know, real rough and tough defense. It's just he did what he's supposed to. Uh, on top of it, you know, other side, the Clippers, Marcus Morris, not who you want being your leading scorer. I said, you know, earlier in the playoffs, you don't want Reggie Jackson being your leading scorer. I mean, that was, you know, you don't want him being your leading scorer with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the floor. Kawhi Leonard goes down. Reggie Jackson picks up the slack. But what you don't want, if you want to win an NBA title, you don't want Marcus Morris, who's a good NBA player. He is. He's good. It's kind of a nuisance. He pisses some guys off. Uh, he's a tough dude. If you look at his face, you're like, I don't, 
I mean, he's 6'9", like 250. It's not a guy you want to run into in an alley, uh, not a guy you want to pick a fight with. But he looks and plays like that type of guy. He's a good, good player, just not the guy you want leading your team. 26 points, 9 rebounds. Paul George, 21 points. Not aggressive enough. 21 points, he has two assists. Uh, it's kind of been the story of his career. It's been the story of the playoffs, so even when Kawhi Leonard was, was not injured. Uh, neither of those guys are consistently aggressive enough with the ball in their hands. And it's not, it's not a new thing for Paul. That's we can't just say, Oh, well, you know, he didn't this series. No, Paul George at times is just kind of fallen by the wayside, going back to the Clippers, you know, when he got waved off by the Blazers, when he's in OKC and, you know, game six, Game, game five was the reason they, they got to game six. Game six rolls around, and he kind of forgets what he did game five. Uh, yeah, the, the Suns were a little more aggressive. That showed uh, Jay Crowder gets a little bit of foul trouble. It just It's one of those things where you get Paul George, and, hey, I don't care if he goes. You all know I love efficiency. I love it. Uh, I don't care if you go seven to 50 if you're really trying. Uh but you just six of 15, that's not doing it. Two assists, I don't know. I feel like you can walk into a few more assists if you be more aggressive. Uh, but that is the story of this Clipper team. Clipper team is just not overly aggressive. They don't seem to try as hard as you would think a team would in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, honestly, that's what led to their downfall last year in the semifinals it was just they kind of gave up once again it rears its head uh, it's the popular topic it's a popular topic we're going to blow up the clippers uh paul george and or Kawhi leonard gotta go uh, i don't know the clippers will, will always be the second team in la they will the clippers would have to rattle off 10 straight championships in LA. And I still don't believe that they'd be anything more than the second team. It's just, it's a, it's a hard thing for them. So I don't know that blowing it up is the thing to do, but when you're relying on guys like Patrick Beverly, who late in the game, when the game's over and you're going to lose goes and gets himself tossed by shoving Chris Paul. Uh, I don't know. You, they don't have a whole lot of assets. It's not something that the Clippers are really in the position to do a whole lot about. But, geez, they, they've got to do something. You can't get rid of two of your best players. You might need to look at dealing one of them. I'm not saying you got to deal Kawhi Leonard. I'm not saying you have to deal Paul George. I'm just saying to get something decent back, you might need to deal one of them. Otherwise, this Clippers run is going to end the same way the Chris Paul and Blake Griffin Clippers. It's, it's only going to get you so far. And it seems right now that they have peaked in the Western Conference Finals game six. Yes, they had injuries. Zubach was out. Kawhi's out. Get it. But you got to fight harder. And they did. They did. Up until 258 when Ty Lu, who I – he gets a lot of love. A lot of love among – people that know basketball better than me, people that are paid through the National Basketball Association. I get it. Uh, I don't think he's the coach. But until he emptied the bench at 258, the Clippers Clippers were still trying. The game was a hell of a lot closer than, than the final score indicates. I mean, the, the Suns shot 54% from three. I don't know. It's one of those things that you look at and you say, oh, okay. Um, can they do more? I don't know. I I don't believe so. Now on the flip side, let's let's be happy. Let's be happy for the Suns. I swear, Suns fans, I'm not trying to jinx. You know, I'm not trying to throw that that Kyle, uh, you know, jinx magic onto the Suns. It's just it it's it's what makes sense. It's what makes sense right now. They should win the NBA Finals. I, they are, they've been the most consistent team. The team that everybody, including myself, said, hey, they're going to have the most trouble with is the Lakers. 
they knocked Lakers out. And they've just proceeded to knock their other two opponents out. I don't see a reason for them to lose the NBA Finals at this point. Yeah. They've got a good older player in Chris Paul. They've got a good young player in Devin Booker. They've got a lot of, you know, either journeyman guys or guys who have been there. Jay Crowder, not the most spectacular guy in the world. Uh, he's been on winning teams. Hey, tonight, 19 points for Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder's been around a long time. He doesn't get scared of the moment. Some of his old teams might say that's a bad thing at times. Uh, yeah. But there's another thing I want to talk about. Sorry, I got to reach for my drink. My other drink. I'm drinking a new whiskey. Uh, I don't drink a whole lot of scotch whiskey, and it's a little harsher. So we're going to wash it down with an energy drink at 1130 at night. And we all wonder why military people have trouble sleeping. Anyways, uh, the thing that throws me, and I can't, I can't ignore it. I think it's the thing that's lost a lot of NBA fans over the years. You know, I'm not saying that we need basketball to be football. I'm just saying I'm tired of the flopping. And some people might say, hey, LeBron James, face a floppy. No, no. I mean, I could see, you know, he's he's face of the NBA. So I could definitely see why he'd say, hey, he's the face of flopping too. No, no, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is, is probably the, the ultimate agitator. He knows how to get under people's skin. He's a good player. Great player. Hall of Fame player. He will be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, he's known around the league by fans, by a lot of people, as the point god. He is one of the best point guards to ever play in the NBA. And the only thing not on his resume was a ring, which he'll probably get this year. But... I won't ignore the shit like chirping at the bench to get a tech at the end of the game. I mean, it's cool to chirp. You chirp the whole game, but chirp at the end of the game, just, you know, cause you know, you're going to win. You think it's cute. Eh, you can miss me with all that. The flopping. I mean, for those of you that didn't watch the game, you know, just, it's permeated the entire team. Uh, yeah. Chris Paul gets a nice floater in the lane. DeMarcus Cousins grabs the ball to go check it in. Chris Paul walks under his elbow, throws himself on the ground. Technical foul on DeMarcus Cousins. Say what you will about DeMarcus Cousins. I love the guy. I love what he did for the city of Sacramento while he was there. He's got a reputation. It's real easy to say the guy with the reputation did something wrong. So, yeah, he picked the right guy to bait. But damn, does that take away from the game? And I watched a couple other times. I watched Devin Booker. You know, he got tagged in the nose. And I understand he's got a broken nose. Gets tagged in the nose, throws himself on the ground. Two minutes later, he's back up in the huddle. Nothing's wrong. He's not grabbing his nose. No, my nose, nothing. He's fine. DeAndre Ayton, ghost poke in the eye. Tory Craig, ghost poke in the eye. Makes it real hard to root for guys like that. God bless the Suns. You know, real happy for them. They deserve it. They have been the most consistent team during the NBA playoffs. I can't root for them. I will be rooting for whoever the Eastern Conference team is. I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's the Hawks. I don't care if it's the Bucks. Chris Paul makes it really hard to root for him when he does all the other shit. He just does. And I understand some people like it. Some people, hey, you know, he's showing his personality. Eh. I mean, I don't... I don't want to call Chris Paul a bitch, but some of the stuff he does is bitch moves. And it bugs me. Just a fan. It's a casual fan. Again, I'm not my my team probably won't see a playoff for another 10 years. I don't know. I'm gonna keep rooting for him. But as a casual fan of some of these teams, 
Chris Paul's been in the playoffs as long as I can remember. He does the same shit. He agitates people. He bitches. He flops on the ground. He does. He does a shit that's not doesn't make the game more entertaining. And this isn't a game he had 41 points. This is a game that he closed out. Chris Paul closed out this game six. Chris Paul is the he had 31 points in the second half. He's the reason that the Suns are in the NBA Finals. All the other shit, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. You want to chirp when you're winning. You want to chirp, you know, do all that. Do it all the time. But do it all the time, you know, maybe in a clean way. I said, hey, if you flop on the ground and you're down for two minutes, work it like football. Hey, it's, you were injured. You need to go get checked out. That's, that's how I feel about it. If you flop on the ground in basketball, and I know it's a hard surface, I know. You need a minute to collect yourself. You flop on the ground, you're down for two minutes, you act like your world is ending. To me, that says, hey, you you probably need to go to the sideline and you, you can miss some game time. That's all. Football does it. Yeah. Football, you tackle a guy to the ground and he stays down for a second. They help him back up, you know, move on. Now, if he stays down on the ground, like you see a whole lot in football, you see a whole, sorry, a whole lot in basketball, you see a whole lot of guys stay on the ground. They stay on the ground? Cool, go to the sideline. You were really hurting a second ago. We don't want, you know, you come back and say the NBA didn't care about me. You're down for a couple minutes, go to the sideline, go get checked out. That's how I feel about it. If you really want to get rid of this whole flopping thing. Also, I'm not sure why we ever replay if you know we're going to just assess a technical foul for a guy walking into another guy and then throwing himself on the ground. I don't know. Get rid of replays if we're going if that's the way we're going to use it. It's my opinion. Anyways, congratulations to the Suns. They'll probably win the NBA title. Good for them. Now, on the other side, we do have the opponent, whoever they're going to face. It's a tied series. It's 2-2. Atlanta, Milwaukee. Uh, if you're not a fan of either of those teams, I doubt you give a shit. But I do. I love basketball. Again, a casual fan of these teams. But, yeah, fan nonetheless. So, the question is, who wins? Um, it's 2-2. It's I, I didn't believe that. The Bucks had some upper hand. They should have. Should have. Admittedly, they should have. I didn't believe they had the upper hand just because Trey Young was out of game four. It was a blowout. It wasn't even fun to watch for anybody. Uh, the downside to it is Giannis Antetokounmpo gets hurt. The Bucks are not deep. They're not. They traded away a solid amount of assets just to get Guys like Drew Holiday there. Uh, and then one of the assets they managed to keep in Dante G DiVincenzo gets hurt. So right now we're looking at a lineup of Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and P.J. Tucker and Pat Connaughton. I mean, I don't know. We can throw Thanasis Antetokounmpo in there and just you know see if he can fit the bill too. Um, he can. He's a he's a long, athletic Greek guy. I don't know, uh, but it's hard to know really which way this goes. Uh, if I was to put money on it, I'd probably say the Hawks have a have a better chance. They're a deeper team, uh, but the way I didn't rule out the Hawks in Game Four, I won't rule out the Bucks. The Bucks may well actually do some things. The Hawks may actually, you know, choke the series away. We see it. We see it all the time. We see a team that should win, like the Bucks probably should have won Game Four without Trey. Without Trey with the Hawks, you would imagine they would have it would have been the other way. Nope, oh, 30, 30 point blowout, and I I can understand why. Uh, Atlanta without Trey is not a one man show. It's not hey just guard Trey and we're all good. Uh, but they're a deeper team. They're a deeper team. It's harder to guard when you don't have just Trey Young, you know, pounding the ball. Again, all the things that I said about Trey Young, I still believe. However, 
it no longer matters because I said Trey Young is not a winning player. And guess what? They're in the Eastern Conference Finals. Everything I say is me being a hater. But I still believe that the Hawks could be a better team because they're not just the one-man show. Lou Williams, who was the punching bag for the Clippers last year, who they effectively just kind of chucked away for Rajon Rondo. But they just chuck away Lou Williams, steps in, and you know just takes over the game, makes the offense functional, and kind of points out some of the Bucks' real issues. The Bucks don't have depth. Uh, P.J. Tucker, 3 of 7. That's basically what you're going to expect from him nightly. 3 of 7, he's going to play really good defense. He's, he's not going to give you a whole lot more. But that's that's where we're at right now. We are at a, a point where, hey, we don't know what's going to happen because as of today, both Trey and Clint Capella are questionable. Giannis is doubtful as of today. Things could always change to, to the run up to the game. Um, again, I'm going to just roll with what my gut says. The Hawks looked really good, a whole lot better than I thought they would without, uh, without Trey. Uh, so I'm going to pick the Hawks for game five. Sorry, Hawks fans, if I jinxed it. Got to go with my gut here. Uh, yeah. I think that's really it for sports, guys. Uh, yeah. It's a dead time for football. I mean, we could talk a little bit. If you guys have ideas for shows in regards to football, what I think is going to happen during the season, yeah. go ahead, toss them out. I have the email down there. Uh, yeah. throw, out, throw out ideas. I can only think up so much. Uh, baseball. Can, love baseball. Love baseball. Love watching baseball. I love going to baseball games. Red Sox fan. Red Sox are killing it. Uh, but, yeah. There's 152 games this year, 150 games this year. I'm not covering baseball, baseball every week. Something big happens. Yeah. Red Sox sweep the Yankees again. But again, we're leading up to the all-star game. Hey, I, you know what? Scratch it. I'll talk a little bit of baseball. I'll talk a little bit of baseball because I do have a pet peeve. Now, I'm sure none of my fans engage in any of this, so I'm not worried about it. But the worst part about baseball is the all-star game. And I'm not saying the game. The game itself is like a baseball game. Uh, the game itself is fun. You get to see some of your best players just try to tee off on who, whatever pitcher they're going against. You know that pitcher usually pitches an inning. That pitcher is just trying to throw it as hard as he can and strike the best players in the league out. I think it's great. What I hate, not gonna. I was about to drop the f bomb. What I hate is fan voting. Now, if some of y'all do this. This is. Bad. Just want a little, little back in. So the All Star Game finalists come out. Now, they don't have a, a final set team, but hey, hey, these are the the final guys that everybody can vote for. Now Red Sox fans did the same shit in the two, early two thousands, mid two thousands, later, you know, two thousands. Uh, they they vote in, you know, just hey, I want to vote in my favorite players. Even if they suck. Even if they suck. The Dodgers snuck in a guy that was hitting 229. I think the Reds snuck in a guy hitting 227. I want to say there was a guy even hitting even lower than that, that that managed to get into the to the fan voting final. Stop it. Stop it. This isn't fun. I want to watch a guy that hits 229 in the All-Star game. I want to watch the best players. I don't know how we fix that. One day I'll come up with it. But gosh, stop voting for guys that are hitting 220. I know batting average isn't anything, but if that dude doesn't have 25 home runs by the All-Star break, I don't want to hear the excuse for, for why. People don't watch baseball for defense. They watch for strikeouts, watch for home runs. That's it. That's it. Effectively, that's what baseball is now anyway. Just like basketball is kind of just the three ball, the NFL is kind of just passing now. Baseball, it's strikeouts and some runs. 
That's where we're out. I mean, at the very least, pitching is a little bit of just, hey, the guys with the best stats, they're the ones getting into the game. I can roll with that. I'm not saying we need to have a blanket. That's exactly how we do it every year. But if we're going to keep voting in guys that are hitting 220, and again, they haven't made it, maybe we need to change it up. All right. Serious topic now. Serious time. Serious Kyle. uh, Serious why Kyle's pissed off. I don't think we've done a why is Kyle mad segment in a couple episodes. Um, Here it is, guys. Bill Cosby got released from prison today. Now, here's what bothers me. He gets released on a technicality. He released because he was innocent. Didn't get released because there was some information that said, Bill Cosby, oh my gosh, we did you wrong. No. Eh. Legally. Legally, we can say, eh. We blurred some lines, and that's why he got convicted. The case that got him sent to prison originally was a $3 million civil suit case. Bill Cosby paid $3 million to the woman that eventually got him sent to jail uh, because he sexually assaulted. Oh, he's sorry. He drugged her and then sexually assaulted her. So this is somebody he knew for about 16 months, you know, when this happened. Uh, But the issue was, you know, hey, do the civil suit, $3 million. The deal apparently that was made at the time was, hey, we don't have anything down in writing, but you can't come after me criminally. I'm just working off of how I've seen everything in business, law, whatever done. If you don't have it down in writing, it don't mean shit to me. If it's not down in writing, it, it doesn't exist. And it blows my mind that we're going to say, I'm not worried about what threat Bill Cosby poses. I mean, realistically, he's an 83-year-old man. The chances of him striking again are slim to none. Uh, not saying they're impossible. I'm just saying it's unlikely. He's probably going to die in his home, really rich. He's fine. But but that's how we're going to we're going to do this is we're going to say, hey, you know, it's not that you were innocent. It's that we we kind of fucked up. We kind of said we wouldn't do this, and somebody found out that we said we wouldn't do it. So now we got to let you out. Let's do due process. And I believe in due process. I think it's incredibly important to the legal system. Um, sometimes, you know, due process pisses me off when we have to go through a court hearing to get Derek Chauvin, who we watched kill a guy on video. You know, that bugs me when we have due process in that manner. And yeah, bugs me here. Due process matters, you know, when we want to find out somebody's innocent. Now, Bill Cosby paid $3 million, more or less saying, I'm not innocent. So I don't feel bad when somebody kind of violates his, you know, civil rights with, oh, well, you know, we said we weren't going to do this. I don't give a shit. There were a lot of things wrong with that. They had people testify from the 80s. You know, because they couldn't stand up for themselves. Because if they had testified in the 80s, nothing would have happened. But you want to sit here and tell me, oh, well, we violated his civil rights, you know, while he was raping people. Which he essentially admitted to in a civil case. Fuck that. Fuck all of that. I know that I'm not... You know, abreast of every single thing that goes on. But I mean, you guys can go and do the Google search for yourself. He didn't get out because he was innocent. He got out because there was a technicality. And it bothers me. 
set to serve three to 10 years. He was denied parole. And here's, here's the real dick kick for some of y'all. He refused to take rehabilitation classes. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I don't need to. It's why he was denied parole. Realistically, he probably gets out anyway. Probably gets out on parole if he just takes those classes. I've met plenty of inmates who tell me they take classes solely to help them get out of prison, not because they believe in rehabilitating themselves. And this is from them. I can't, I can't verify this. I can't call these guys up. Uh, but I'm just letting you know, in my experience, you have guys that really want to rehabilitate. You have guys that don't. If you say you don't want to take classes, I think that says louder than taking a class just for your own benefit that you don't care. Now we had people come out today and say, hey, you know, we're outraged or, hey, Bill Cosby's, you know, vindicated. It's people that were outraged, right? Some of these girls got, you know, at the very least touched in a way they didn't want. One woman, again, who got a $3 million payday, got raped. There's, there's not a whole lot of like, more I need to say on that. It's wrong. I understand due process is important, but we kind of need to draw the fine line of you know, how important is it? Due process is important when we're trying to defend people against wrongdoing. To feel a little less bad when you admit to doing something wrong. Again, he doesn't have to verbally. He doesn't have to. He's had enough people come out and say, eh, he touched me. None of them are gaining anything by saying it. None of them. Statute of limitations says that they can't gain anything if they came out and said it. At a certain point, you just kind of have to roll with, hey, this dude's fucked up. He doesn't care that he's fucked up. What? No. Y'all want to know why I teach my you know, kids about gun safety and why I want them to you know, know how to shoot a gun? It's because when my children are old enough to carry a gun, they'll probably carry a gun with them everywhere. Because there's pieces of shit like this that you know weasel their way into people's lives. Bill Cosby was America's dad for a while. America's not America's black dad. He's America's dad. And he used that position to sexually assault people. It's, it's one of those things that you should really think about when you sit there and make fucking jokes about it. Some of you don't have kids. I get it. Not as important to you. Oh, I'd never let that happen to my kid. Yeah. That's, that's how most parents of sexual assault victims feel before it happens. I never let that happen to my kid. Shit happens. What we should be doing on the back end is covering our kids you know, before something happens, or at the very least, after it happens. Not saying, ah, you know what? We kind of violated his civil rights. Uh, he's guilty as shit, but we violated his civil rights, so he needs to get out. So it's one of those class things. It's one of those class things. If you got a good lawyer, and I'm not really worried about some of the other people that got swooped up in the Me Too movement. A lot of the, you know, some of those guys that went to jail, they're not, I mean, they'll serve, you know, 80% of their time or whatever it is, get out, live their, you know, really rich lives and, you know, move on. I'm just saying that, you know, when we, we finally have them in custody, have them in jail, let them sit there and serve their time. I don't know, guys. 
That's just me, though. I think that's all I have for you guys tonight. Not really big, not really thoughtful, not, you know, a whole lot more to say. Um, I think it's it for tonight. As always, I want to promote my guys over at Tosh TV. I want to promote Marcus over at the Truth Valley Church. And I want to promote Jason over at the Arizona Flag Company. You can, at the very least, find them all on Facebook. At the very least. I know you can go find Taj on YouTube as well. So like, subscribe. You know, if you're interested in their business at all, you know, go give them a shout. They're good people. I'm not the worst guy in the world either. So again, if you want to share what I'm putting out there. If you have different ideas of shows, if you want to come on the show, if you want to help anything, you contact me at Kyle, the weight at Gmail, hit me up on, you know, here. Also again, like subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the same stuff here, guys. Um, eventually I'll be able to just post, you know, just random content to YouTube as well. Um, right now I'm not doing that. Uh, focus more on the leave in the country stuff. Uh, but again, like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Until Friday, guys, uh, I will see you then.